Sure. Yep. Coming on uh, live with us uh, tonight is Ross Barkan. So he's a journalist and author of the upcoming book, The Prince, Andrew Cuomo, Coronavirus and the Fall of New York. Uh, Ross, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here to talk uh, Cuomo. <laughs> yeah, I know you. I know you've been doing a lot of that. So I, I hope you're not Cuomoed out. He's basically taking up a spot in your in your brain in your conscience. But um, uh, we really appreciate you doing this. And uh, so Ross, just to get right into it, um, you know, we were hoping um, to get to give people insights into Cuomo's time in office that perhaps hasn't received sufficient national attention like he did during the coronavirus. So Cuomo famously came into the governor's mansion as sort of this self-proclaimed white knight, committed to rooting out corruption in Albany. Right. Uh, but the governor himself has faced many questions about his own dealings. So can you just discuss some of those scandals and give people some context? Sure. So you have the current scandals, which uh, are are actually unrelated to each other. He's facing six sexual harassment allegations and he is facing an FBI probe into his oversight of nursing homes and how he tallied nursing home deaths. It's actually not the first time that He's faced the federal investigation. His top aide, a man named Joe Prococo, actually went to prison um, over a bribery conviction several years ago. Um, so corruption is, is not a new thing or corruption allegations are not a new thing. And um, you know, multiple members of the administration in the past have gone, gone to prison on corruption charges. But right now, Cuomo is dealing um, dealing with probes on two different fronts. There's the federal investigation into his handling of nursing homes, and the state attorney general is currently um, deputizing investigators to look into the now six sexual harassment allegations. Very, very big number. And, and Ross, besides, so as you said, so now with all the, the sexual uh, allegations, um, the scandal with the nursing homes, I was wondering if you could bring uh, us back a little bit to the beginning of his tenure um, when he was sort of um, empowering uh, breakaway Democrats and, and helping keep Republicans in power and at the same time sort of thwarting uh, any progressive reforms that had any shot. Yeah, so Andrew Cuomo came into office uh, more than a decade ago um, as a fiscally moderate centrist, even conservative a Democrat who was socially liberal. He was a triangulator in the mode of Bill Clinton. And one of his chief aims um, for much of his tenure was to ensure that progressive Democrats never controlled the state Senate in New York. So New York is a blue state. We haven't voted for a Republican presidential candidate since Ronald Reagan in 1984. Yet, despite that fact, we had a Republican-controlled state Senate as recently as 2018. And the reason was Cuomo allowed Republicans to gerrymander their own state Senate districts back in 2012. And then he allowed, encouraged, um, helped create a breakaway group of Democrats known as the Independent Democratic Conference, and they had a power sharing agreement with the Republican conference and they controlled the state Senate together. So you had this group of Democrats called the IDC, these um, you know, fake faux Democrats, and you had the Republican conference and together they ran the state Senate and they were able to block a host of progressive measures related to healthcare, um, immigration, um, abortion rights, you, know, you name it, uh, tenant rights, and it wasn't until 2019 when Democrats took full control of the state Senate that a lot of progressive aims were achieved in New York State. And that was no thanks to Andrew Cuomo. So for those resistance liberals, those Democrats who really fell into Cuomo's thrall um, over the course of the pandemic, it's important for them to learn about their history and that Andrew Cuomo was empowering Trump supporting Republicans for much of his tenure. It's amazing. It's amazing that that happened, though. I think, do think some local voters smartened up to it because a lot of those IDC um, members were voted out of office, right? Yes. Six out yeah. of eight were defeated in the primary in 2018, which is pretty remarkable. Again, no thanks to Cuomo. That was activists <laughs> on the ground, that um, advocacy organizations, the Working Families Party. Uh, Cuomo had no role and, in fact, would have very much preferred that those primary challengers did not win. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so Ross, I want to get into the pandemic a little bit for a few minutes. Obviously, we just discussed that he's sort of been lauded by the national media, by people across the country, really, um, for his PowerPoint presentations and for, I guess, uh, you know, uh, acting competent um, while we had a federal uh, president who barely did anything to stop the coronavirus, um, it seems. So um, what has your reporting, because you have this book coming out, what does your reporting tell us about the way Cuomo managed the coronavirus, especially at the beginning? So the, the, the current narrative, which still exists to an extent, is that Andrew Cuomo handled COVID quite well. He was triumphant. He was successful. And lately, he's been led astray by the sexual harassment allegations and also the, the issue into the obscuring of the nursing home death toll, right? That's kind of like the, the popular conception. And I, I would argue, and I, I would say the facts show you that, in, in fact, Andrew Cuomo never handled the pandemic well, and New York failed catastrophically to prevent mass death. To date, we have the second highest death toll, the second highest death rate. The only reason we don't have the first highest death rate is because New Jersey is first and much of their suffering um, was is because of the uh, you know horrors coming out of New York. Um, and only recently were we surpassed by California, a much bigger state. So going back to March a year ago now, this time exactly a year ago, Andrew Cuomo was still comparing COVID to the flu. We associate that now with a right-wing Republican talking point. You'd hear that on Fox News. You'd hear that from Donald Trump. It's like the flu. It's not a big deal. Go back, watch the press conferences from early March, read the transcripts as I did for my book. Um, and you see that Andrew Cuomo was someone who did not believe COVID was a real threat. He said Ebola was worse. He said SARS was worse. He said not to worry. He said over and over, the fear is worse than the virus. And finally, when even Bill de Blasio began to take COVID seriously and said New York should shelter in place, as San Francisco was doing, Andrew Cuomo dismissed the idea entirely. And we didn't get a shelter in place order until March 22nd of 2020. By then, COVID had spread rapidly. People were getting infected. People were dying. So you start right there we were very slow to react compared to San Francisco and the surrounding counties compared to Washington state. Both these places to date have very low death tolls and death rates. Believe it or not, less than 500 people have died of COVID in San Francisco to date. California, Southern California has had a very hard time for various reasons, but early action does save lives. New York was very slow to react. Bill de Blasio should share blame for that. I, I, I don't let him off the hook in my book or in my reporting. Um, but Andrew Cuomo is the governor of the state. He's the state's most powerful figure by far. He has the power to shut down schools. He has the power to shut down businesses. The, the, all, all the authority rests in his hands. And despite his reputation, uh, he was very slow to use his power to save them. It's just incredible, incredible insights. Um, I wanted to ask you, I know we, we're running short on time here. I just wanted to ask you to weigh in on his sort of historical hatred for the Working Families Party. <laughs> yeah, so so that go, goes way back. Um, it go, goes back to his first re-election bid where the Working Families Party flirted with and did not endorse, but flirted with supporting Zephyr Teachout, who, who is, uh, of course, you know, an acclaimed law professor, um, you know, she, she, she's great. And you know, she was looking to primary Cuomo, the Working Families Party was looking at her, did not support her, still supported Cuomo. So Cuomo's always viewed the Working Families Party as a threat in his state. They are a progressive party. They used to be a hybrid of organized labor and progressive activist groups. Andrew Cuomo forcefully drove labor out of the WFP and, and in essence told them, it's, it's them or it's me. It says Andrew Cuomo is the one for the um, you know public and private sector unions. He's the one who's determining how much they're making, um, what type of projects they get if they're in construction, you know, or if they're healthcare workers, you know, um, you know what sort of hospitals they work in and their pay rate and things like that. Andrew Cuomo is the ultimate power in the state, so he has a lot of leverage. So he explicitly pushed labor out of the working family. 
And then in 2018, WFP supported Cynthia Nixon in the primary. Obviously, uh, Andrew Cuomo did not take too kindly to that. And he's been trying ever since to destroy them. He has raised the threshold of um, votes needed to keep your ballot line. He did that very recently. So WFP is always under the gun now. Um, and they are explicitly antagonistic to Cuomo and the leadership has called for him to resign. Uh, so, you know, he, he would very much prefer that, that they were utterly obliterated and, um, you know, they very much are a group that is working against him. It is an umbrella organization for progressive activists in the state. Hey, Ross, we have about a minute left. I just want to ask you one quick follow up about the coronavirus. And, um, it's this idea that Cuomo has said multiple times that the um, sort of the federal government was to blame for what happened to New York because New York is a global um, state and, and people came here from all across the world. Um, can you just talk about that aspect? His perspective is that um, the federal government is what really failed the state. Sure. So the federal government did do a, a terrible job preparing for coronavirus. You know, I, I, I would never argue that Trump did a good job. But every state was fighting with that handicap. I, I, I think any governor who is expecting Donald Trump's federal government to be adequately prepared for coronavirus was a deluded governor. And you saw other governors really took the initiative to prepare, to listen to their public health experts, to have a plan. I go back to Washington state. You can look at states like Vermont. You can go around the country and see governors who really trusted their experts and who were very um, forceful uh, about moving quickly to close down the state and, and save lives. Um, so you, 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 it's true that Trump was a disaster, but all 50 states knew that going in. We knew coronavirus was a threat. By the beginning of 2020, all you had to do is read the New York Times. So it, most of his talking points don't really hold up under any real scrutiny. He blames a slow travel ban of European travelers, but California too is a global hub. And though they've had a higher death toll, their death rate is far lower than New York. So you can't just say we're a global hub. You can't just say the federal government is bad. There are other places with other airports. Every governor knew what Trump was going into this and every governor really had to design new plan to, you know, counteract Trump's incompetence. And that's unfortunately what federalism is. And um, Cuomo can blame Trump all he wants, but now Trump is out of office. And so he doesn't have the cover of Trump anymore. And that's really why I think you're seeing all of this controversy get so much attention. I do believe if Trump were in office currently, you would not see so much media attention. That's great, Ross. So can you um, tell the audience where they could find the book i think it's available for pre-order right i don't know if they yeah. shipped it out yet but can you tell people where to find it yes so you can go to it's being published by or books and you can go on their website you go or books.com uh, you can search you know andrew cuomo the prince you know it'll it'll pop up pretty quickly you, when you do a pre-order you get 15 percent off pre-order ship in april publication date is still a few more months down the road but pre-orders will get them early and you get the discount. So I would urge you to pre-order now. Great, Ross. We really appreciate you coming on and good luck with the book. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks again, Ross. All right. Right on. And we linked the book in the comments section as a show is supposed to do. So uh, be sure you check on that and do that. Thank you again, Ross.